time for Doc Talk on WROI, and we are joined today by Teresa Perkins. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. Um, before we dive into the, the big topic here, let's take a moment to get to know Teresa. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I grew up um, way down the street Peru, Indiana. Okay. And uh, so I'm not, I'm not far from home. And uh, went to uh, graduate from Peru High School and uh, took off to Grace College, started uh, my uh, studies, and then uh, transferred to uh, Miami of Ohio and got my undergrad there and then uh, in nursing and then did my uh, bachelor's and master's with Indiana Wesleyan. Um, did clinicals up here with uh, Maureen Neely in family practice and then also Dr. Ron Beck in uh, orthopedics and that's how I got up here um, and I got married and moved up here as well. My husband was already living here. He also is from Peru. That's it. All right, so lots of uh, local ties throughout your life yeah. there it sounds like. So we wanted to talk today about carpal tunnel. So what exactly is carpal tunnel? Carpal tunnel syndrome is when uh, the nerve in the wrist called the median nerve is compressed uh, or pinched. Um, and it uh, can happen to anybody for whatever reason. It's typically related to a repetitive excessive motion. Um, it can be pretty common in uh, farmers, construction workers, factory workers, but it can happen to anybody, even office staff and those kind of things, just repetitive motion basically. Okay. Now, is there any way to um, do anything to help avoid getting carpal tunnel? There really isn't. It's, it's something that uh, can, can happen uh, basically on its own. There's nothing that really uh, prevents it necessarily. There are things that help the symptoms. The symptoms include numbness, tingling, sometimes burning sensation, certain fingers, the thumb, the index. That, that nerve uh, gives sensation to the thumb, the index, the long finger, and the inside of the ring finger. Um, sometimes anti-inflammatories like Advil, leave ibuprofen, those kind of things can help. Bracing can help to keep uh, you from bending the wrist or moving the wrist a lot and putting pressure again on that nerve. Okay. Uh, so I know um, my godmother has carpal tunnel. Uh, and there's a surgery that you can get if uh, you come down with carpal tunnel. Yeah, uh, generally we start very conservative with treatment, particularly if the symptoms are intermittent or once in a while and are not constant. If they're constant, then that means there's much more pressure on the nerve, and uh, if you don't treat it, uh, then that can cause uh, muscle wasting, uh, decreased strength in the hand, uh, and can also do damage to the nerve that is irreparable. Uh, or doesn't regenerate on its own, and so you can have some long-term loss of sensation. Um, so yeah, the the bracing, the anti-inflammatory, sometimes a carpal tunnel, a steroid injection in that area can eliminate, or not eliminate, but can alleviate some of the symptoms, um, but it's kind of a band-aid generally that does not cure it. And so then if you move to the surgical side of it, then um, yeah, we call it a carpal tunnel release where a small incision is made on the hand. It doesn't, the procedure itself doesn't take very long to do, maybe 10, 15 minutes. It takes longer to, I tell patients, it takes longer to get you ready and get you in there and hook you all up and all that than it does to actually do the procedure. Um, the sur orthopedic surgeons do the procedure and um, in our case, Dr. Sheedy. And then uh, basically what happens, there's a, there's a uh, it's called a transverse carpal ligament that goes across um, the nerve. And we cut through that and those edges kind of come back, retract a little bit and scar down, taking pressure off the nerve. Um, and so it's a, it's a quick procedure. Um, the incision, has a couple, two or three stitches in it, and those come out at seven to 10 days. We have limited, uh, we prefer you 
not do a whole lot of heavy lifting, pulling, pushing afterwards for a couple of weeks, let that incision heal well, and then you can gradually get back to doing your normal things. Sometimes the numbness and tingling is not, has not gone away immediately after surgery. Sometimes it does. Um, but it can, it can take several weeks to even several months. And in, in cases where the nerve has been really uh, compressed for quite a while and is angry, as we say, uh, it takes a while for that to heal and can sometimes be even a year. Okay. All right. Um, now, I know we were talking a little bit uh, off air, which I found interesting because I was not aware of this. Uh, the symptoms can actually be worse at night. Yes. Yeah, and um, like other orthopedic things or, or lots of other medical things, you're working and you're busy during the day and your mind is on other things. You sometimes don't notice or you just kind of ignore these symptoms, but at night when you're trying to sleep and, uh, and everything is quiet and your mind is, you're trying to turn that off and go to sleep, uh, that some of these things um, like your arthritis pain and, and nerve pain and that kind of stuff can really bother you. And so the bracing is most helpful at night for people who even sometimes might kind of curl up their wrist and uh, their hand underneath their head to sleep or whatever, that they're putting constant pressure on that nerve. Okay. So. And now, um, of course, if someone feels like they might be coming down, as we've talked about kind of the symptoms, uh, if they're noticing these symptoms, they can get a hold of you to have that kind of looked at to That's right, it. that's right. And many people will see their family doctor first, and sometimes by the time they come to orthopedics, they've already tried anti-inflammatories and maybe even bracing. Um, it, uh, when they come to us, if they haven't had a nerve test, um, electro diagnostic study where a neurologist will uh, test these nerves, um, then we generally will order that and have them go see the neurologist, have that done, and then that, that can help us diagnose mild, moderate, severe carpal tunnel syndrome. Even though they have the symptoms, um, that test is, is a diagnostic uh, study that confirms. And then we talk about surgical options if, if they're ready to, to go that direction. And again, if, if the symptoms, and generally we do come along gradually, and uh, are intermittent kind of coming and going. Um, but if they certainly are there and have been there constantly for some time, then we encourage getting pressure off that nerve. And sometimes people will also notice that they're um, dropping items or they've lost some grip strength or even fine motor skills like doing buttons or, or women putting, or men too, putting earrings in their ear or, um, something like that where the fine motor they also have maybe sometimes noticed a little uh, wasting of the muscle uh, in the hand um, particularly uh, below the thumb and uh, that kind of thing uh, maybe uh, can't hold a cup of coffee in the morning with yeah, just yeah. one hand anymore but you kind of got to get that other hand in there to stabilize it or whatever um, and so those are some of the symptoms as well okay now, if they wanted to give your office a call to schedule an appointment with you, what's a good number to reach you guys at? Oh, okay. That's, uh, hmm, let's see. I don't call it. So it's 574-223-9525. Uh, uh, okay. Schaefer Medical uh, Center. And um, and uh, we're in the front, front uh, part of that building. And they can make an appointment with uh, myself or Jenny Hensley is the other nurse practitioner. And then we have Dr. Sheedy, like I mentioned. And so uh, all of us can, can uh, see this issue and get the ball rolling. All right. Um, so basically the best advice is if you think you're starting to have the symptoms of carpal tunnel, get a hold of your uh, family doctor. Yeah, you can certainly start there. Um, and... Uh, if uh, you call them and they say, hey, that sounds like carpal tunnel, go ahead and call orthopedics, that's fine. Um, you don't have to go through the family practice doctor, but uh, that's generally uh, when we see patients unless they're already established in ortho and uh, orthopedics for other reasons, and sometimes they'll just go straight to orthopedics, and that's fine too. E either way is fine. 
All right, well, Teresa, thank you so much for all of the, uh, the knowledge on Carpal Tunnel. I know you've got uh, an appointment at 8.30, so I will not keep you. <laughs> I don't want to your office to get yelling at anybody for being late, so we will let you get out of here. Thank you so much for coming in and talking Carpal Tunnel with us today. It was a pleasure. Great, thank you. Thank you.